All right. Well, it's been a bit since I saw you last, or so you've seen me last. Um, gone to town a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is there of note right now? Okay. Just so you know, you get about six feet nine inches of GT2 belt, and you need to use that hunk of belt in two different places. So. When I did the y axis here, uh, I had four feet left over, so in theory I used uh, two feet nine inches. And then when I did the uh, x axis here, um, I, was I ended up using three feet. So uh, if you're given six feet nine inches, technically you could cut it in half and then uh, go at it. Otherwise, you can try to be as frugal as you can with it and then be left with about a one foot section remaining that you just don't use. Um, let's see, what else, what else uh, of note? Um, my Y idler, which is this portion right here, the, the opening for the bearing to go into was really it was too tight so I had to widen that with a uh, a file on both sides pretty heavily that was annoying in that same piece uh, at the top of it it was actually fused together there's supposed to be a little gap all the way down the side to relieve tension so you can push the bearings in so I actually had to, to separate that gap all the way so that I could get the bearings in it wasn't a big deal just a knife will do that I had to do the same thing for the bearing on the motor mount uh, on the other other side, can't see it. I'm sorry, but that wasn't a big deal. The big deal on that portion or on that side, actually, I will zoom up for you. Wee. Okay, so we're talking about over here. Um, I can spin this for you. Too many parts lying around. I'm trying to keep all my pieces together. I still leave them in the bags, cut little slits, and empty a piece out as I need it. Um, so this portion over here, let me get this out of the way. Um, again, I had to do a little slit back here so that I could get the bearings in. But the holes that there's three holes to mount the motor with. They were way too deep because you're supposed to, or shallow, I guess is the real word. You're supposed to be able to use the M3 by 10 millimeter bolts to attach the motor with. And when I put those in, not even the thread was exposed on the other side, so I had to drill those down a fair amount. So to deepen the hole, and I had to open it up so I could actually push them through. So that was kind of annoying, but it happens. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Um, my Y carriage, this or extruder carriage, whatever they call this, was uh, poorly printed, super poorly printed. I, I am not thrilled with that at all. I had to clean it up a fair amount. Um, my belt, they're supposed to kind of tuck into a, uh, a jagged groove in the back. Uh, one's kind of slightly protruding. I don't expect it to be a problem, but I certainly don't like it and probably will want to print that again when I get this thing up and running. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I had to uh, do some adjusting of the screws down low, uh, or nuts down low, and uh, in the back here, because now that I've kind of got this thing assembled, I can figure out what my extremes are relative to where the print head is. So that's about right. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, one thing to note when you're installing the five millimeter threaded rod, give some space in between the tops of the drive motor shaft and the bottom of the rod. You have these helical connectors on both sides. Oops. Sorry. These guys. And uh, if the threaded rod is actually sitting on top of the motor mount, um, it won't allow as much flex, so 
uh, give it a little bit of an air buffer so that it can flex. That's what the purpose of these is. I would imagine that will help with any kind of noise. I've heard these things can be noisy. We will see what this one's like once I get it running. Um, let's see, is that it for the time being? Yeah, I think that's about it for the time being. I still have a running tally of missing parts from this kit. It's nothing too extreme, but, you know, half a dozen screws or bolts at this point, and uh, I'll tell you that that missing threaded rod sure is uh, annoying at this point. Who knows if I'll even swap it out. It's a bit of an undertaking, but I'm still able to move forward with my build, so that's good. And da -da 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 -da. I think that's about it for now. I'm getting close to doing all the electronics. I will say that as I go through this, get when I clean it up, which I'm not there yet, I haven't even put the wiring on. When I uh, when I clean up my cables, I've got some um, coiled loom, I guess is what it's called, not split loom, but it's kind of a, a curly cue uh, that I'll use to clean up everything. It was not included in the kit, so when I get this finished, you'll see it cleaned up. Zip ties would work. You could e-tape it, I guess, but I like that better. Uh, or heat shrink, that would be nice too, but I don't think I'm going to go that route. And also, at some point in life, maybe next month, I did order one of the uh, screens for this kit, screen and CF card reader that will mount on the uh, ramps board, which I think is just a pass-through to the uh, uh, Arduino board underneath. So in theory, this thing will be a standalone printer if I want it to be. Looking forward to that. In the meantime, I'll hook it up to the computer via USB. Speaking of which, the USB cord that comes with these things is not even, I think, four feet long. I've at least gone and acquired a six-foot cable to at least be able to get some length. Uh, I hate to be printing within four feet of my computer and bumping my elbows on things that are get hot. Um, that's about it for now. I think that next is going to be the... Uh, hot heated bed and running my cables. Um, at some point in life I'm also going to try to figure out what these bearings are for. They came in the kit, it would make sense. And I've seen them use things like this for spool holders uh, or um, you know, filament spool holders. But I have no real idea where they're used. And the most annoying thing of the day, I've gone through all the videos and it didn't even take me to putting the X carriage on or the X axis in general on so it's great that they had videos that took you to a distance but they didn't take you all the way uh, you had to use the internet a bit for reference it's somewhat self-explanatory somewhat obvious but there's some little nuances that if you didn't uh, know what you were doing you might get in some trouble um, so yeah do keep that in mind that if you're using, if buying from Folger Tech, uh, the videos that they provide via the Google Doc or Google Drive, don't take it to completion. Um, they don't even take you to the x-axis. So, yeah, keep that in mind. It's, again, not that hard, but if you didn't know, you might get lost or run into a, a wall. Alright, well, gonna go back at it.